In this question, a scientist has 9.79 moles of bromine, Br2, and 1.51 moles of sulfur, S8, and wants to make as much sulfur dibromide, SBr2, as possible. We are provided with the correctly balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Okay, so in this question, our goal is to figure out what is the limiting reactant. That means which of our reactants do we not have enough of to use up all of the other one? And based on that, how much of our product will we get? So our first step is to write down how many moles of each substance we have. In this question, we're given the moles in the question. So that part's easy. We're given 9.79 moles of bromine and 1.51 moles of sulfur. Okay, our next step is to figure out which is the limiting reactant of these. Now let's have a look in our equation. We can see that we need eight moles of bromine for every one mole of sulfur. So that gives us our conversion factor for our reactants. Eight moles of Br2 and one mole of sulfur react together. So if we have exactly the same on our left and right in our moles that we're given in the question, then there won't be any limiting reactant and both will get completely used up. However, if we have more than eight moles of bromine to react with one mole of sulfur, or on the other hand, if we had more than one mole of sulfur to react with eight moles of bromine, we'd end up having something left over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the moles provided and I'm gonna use that to figure out how much of the other thing would we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the calculation for our 1.51 moles of S8. So if I had 1.51 moles of S8, how much bromine would I need to react with that completely? So let's go ahead and do our calculation using our dimensional analysis table. So I'm putting moles of S8 on the bottom and moles of bromine on the top. And I have one mole of S8 to eight moles of bromine. I can cancel my units for moles of S8 and go ahead and do my calculation, which is 1.51 times eight divided by one moles of bromine, which gives me 12.08 moles of bromine, Br2. So given 1.51 moles of S8, I would need 12.08 moles of Br2 to react fully or completely. However, when I look at how much bromine Br2 was provided, we only have 9.79 moles. We don't have enough bromine in order to react fully with the sulfur. So the one that we don't have enough of, that's our limiting reactant. So let's write that down. Our limiting reactant, that's the reactant that we don't have enough of. And when I say don't have enough of, I mean we don't have enough of to react all of our reactants completely. So in this question, we would need more bromine to react with the sulfur that we have. So bromine is our limiting reactant because we don't have enough of it. So our limiting reactant here is bromine. Okay, so what that means is that the amount of bromine is going to control what's happening in the reaction. Because we have excess sulfur, it doesn't actually matter how much sulfur we have. The thing that's controlling how much reaction is happening is the bromine. So to find the theoretical yield of sulfur dibromide, we're going to use our conversion factor from our equation along with the amount of bromine since that's our limiting reactant. 
So for our theoretical yield, we're going to calculate this based on the amount of the limiting reactant. So we have 9.79 moles of bromine. That's our limiting reactant. So we're going to use that to figure out how much sulfur dibromide we're going to make. So let's go ahead and write out a conversion factor. So on the left we have 8 moles of Br2 and that's equal to 8 moles of SBr2. So there's our conversion factor. And actually, with the conversion factor, since it's going to go in a fraction, if we can cancel down our numbers, then we're able to do that. Since we have 8 on both sides, we can divide by 8 on both sides to get 1. So actually what we found is that we have a 1 to 1 ratio. So I can change that to be 1 to 1, just to make things simpler. If you kept it as 8 and 8, it would still work fine, but writing it as 1 to 1 helps make it a little bit more simpler. Okay, so now I'd be converting my uh, the moles of my limiting reactant, which was 9.79 moles of Br2. Drawing my dimension analysis table. And I'm converting this into moles of SBr2, which is our product. So I'm going to put moles of Br2 on the bottom so that that will cancel out. Moles of SBr2 on the top, because that's what we want to find. And we've got a one-to-one -one ratio. Then we cancel out our moles of Br2. We're multiplying everything on the top and dividing by everything on the bottom. So 9.79 times 1 divided by 1 moles of SBr2. So in this question, because we have a one-to-one -one ratio, the amount of the product is going to be the same as the amount of our limiting reactant. So we also have 9.79 moles of SBr2. So when we have a one-to-one -one ratio, we don't really need to follow through all the calculations because it's obvious what it's going to be. But I wanted to show you how to do that so you're ready for when you have a question that doesn't have a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so we can now go ahead and put our theoretical yield in here. So you can see that the yield was controlled by the amount of bromine. The reason why is that bromine is the limiting reactant, which means that we don't have enough of it in order to fully react with the other reactant in our question. Let's do one more question of this type. In this question, a scientist has 1.28 moles of cobalt-3 oxide, CO2O3, and 2.96 moles of water, H2O and wants to make as much cobalt-3 hydroxide, COOH3, as possible. We are provided with the balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Okay, so our first step is to write down how many moles of each substance is present. And this is easy because in this question we're given the moles of each substance, so we just need to write it down. We had 1.28 moles of CO2O3, and we had 2.96 moles of H2O. Okay, so our first step is figuring out which of these is the limiting reactant. To do that, I'm going to take one of them, I can choose either, and I'm gonna figure out how much of the other thing I would need to react fully with that. Then I'm gonna use that to figure out which is the limiting reactant. So I'm gonna take my moles of CO2O3 and figure out how much H2O would I need to react with that fully. So first I'm going to get my conversion factor. We have one mole of CO2O3 and three of H2O in our equation. So that's one mole of CO2O3 gives three moles of H2O. So that is the conversion factor that's the ratio I would need in order for the amounts to be perfect so that all of my cobalt oxide and all of my water get used up. Okay, so I'm gonna choose, I can choose either of these. I'm gonna choose this one. I'm gonna go ahead and convert that. 
So I have 1.28 moles of CO2O3. I'm going to convert that into moles of H2O. So I'm going to draw my dimensional analysis table. So I'm putting moles of CO2O3 on the bottom, so that will cancel out, and moles of H2O on the top, because that's what I'm trying to get. Then I'll put in my numbers for my conversion factor, so the top and bottom of my fraction are the same. So I've got more, one mole of CO2O3, three moles of H2O, and I can cancel out my moles CO2O3, multiply everything on the top, and divide by everything on the bottom. So 1.28 times 3 moles of H2O divided by 1. That gets me 3.84 moles of H2O. So I would need 3.84 moles H2O to react fully. Now if I look at how much H2O I have, I only have 2.96 moles of H2O. So that's not enough H2O to react fully with the CO2O3 provided. So our limiting reactant, remember that's the one, the reactant that I don't have enough of. And I would need 3.84 moles of H2O to react fully with this CO2O3. Therefore, since I have less moles of H2O, H2O must be my limiting reactant, water. Okay, so given that we know that the moles of H2O are our limiting reactant, that's what's going to control how much of our product is made. So we're now going to figure out how much of our product we would have based on the moles of our limiting reactant, which was water. So we've got 2.96 moles of H2O, and we're converting that into moles of COOH3. So looking at my equation, going from H2O to COOH3, I've got 3 H2O and 2 COOH3. So that tells me that 3 moles of H2O gives 2 moles of COOH3. So that's my conversion factor. So that's what I'm going to use now in my dimensional analysis. So let's draw our dimensional analysis table. I'm putting moles of H2O on the bottom because that's what I want to cancel out and moles of COOH3 on the top because that's what I want to find. And we have a ratio of three moles of H2O to two moles of COOH3. I'm then going to cancel my moles of H2O because they're the same on the top and the bottom, multiply everything on the top and divide. So that gets me 2.96 multiplied by two moles of COOH3 divided by three, which gets me 1.97 moles of COOH3. Three. So I can put that in my answer box here. So our first step in this question was figuring out which of these was the limiting reactant. To do that, we have to do one of our conversions using dimensional analysis to figure out, based on the amount of one, how much of the other would we need. Then we compare that with what we actually have to decide which of these is our limiting one that we don't have enough of. Then the one that's limiting, that's what we're going to use to figure out our yield, which means how much of our product that we get using our conversion factor from our equation based on the limiting reactant and then converting the amount of the limiting reactant into the amount of product.